This video tutorial is going to go through the steps of creating a Z-Depth image in V-Ray for Rhino. The image displayed here is a Z-Depth image of a 3D scene I've rendered out in V-Ray. What the Z-Depth image does is it gives a gradient from white to black to the objects in a V-Ray scene dependent on how far away they are from the camera. The further the objects are from the camera, the darker they will appear and the closer they are, the lighter they will appear. And therefore you get this sort of gradient map showing the depth of the objects in that particular scene. Now this map can be used to create a sort of fog and an atmospheric texture if we overlay it onto the top of a base image. I have an image below this here and if I select my Z depth map, go to image adjustments and invert to flip the whites and the blacks round, we then get the white areas in the further part of the scene. And if we then overlay this on a screen blending mode, we get this sort of fog effect that we can then control using the fill color on here. Now I'm going to go through how to render this out from a V-Ray file. So let's switch over to a 3D scene in Rhino and render out the Z-Depth map. So this frame here shows the image I'm currently rendering out in my Rhino scene. The image is just below here and is of this building and it's actually following on from the leaves tutorial which was the previous video I made on this subject. And we're currently rendering out that scene there. Here's the 3D model on the left here. Now I'm going to just use this scene as an example and we're going to add in a Z-Depth render element to our renderer so we're able to render out this map as we render our actual image. Now by default, if we go to the top left of our V-Ray frame buffer once we've hit render, you'll see we have an RGB color option and an alpha option as two ways of looking at our image. The RGB is just the color the image is when you render it out with all the lighting, all the reflections and everything within the render. The alpha just shows you where objects are in the scene and where the background of the scene is, so where no objects are. Now, if we want to add in the Z-Depth to this list, we can go to our render settings in the V-Ray Asset Editor. This can be opened just by selecting this sort of V option here. In the settings menu, if we click on this right hand bar here to open out the larger settings and under render elements here we're just going to scroll down to find the z-depth which will be at the bottom there and add it in. Now when you add the z-depth in it also comes with this series of options below and it will have a near distance and a far distance. Now this distance will be based upon the units you're using in your scene. So if you're in millimeters for instance this will only be 500 millimeters from the camera. So what will happen if, if I then re-render out this view here and we see the Z-Depth as it affects, it will actually appear in this first instance completely black because the far distance isn't set far away enough. It's not giving us that gradient across all of our image. So we'll need to tweak that far distance amount to get that proper gradient showing up as we expect in our Z-Depth map. So you can see the image is rendering out here. And if I switch now, my Z depth will now show up on here because I've added it in as my render element. But currently it will be completely black because my far distance is too low. So let's up this to 50,000 millimeters, i.e. 50 meters in this case, and we'll see what change this has in the render. Yeah. You can now see that's rendering out and we're getting now that distance effect. Now this back building is still a bit too dark. You can see that this sort of black color is where that 50 meter distance is so that's the darkest part of the depth scene so in order to get all the building in we're going to need to just increase that so i'm going to put it to 70,000, i.e 70 meters in this case and just see what effect that gives us and hopefully this should get in the whole of that building and there we should see everything in the map there we go and what you're looking for with this is a good gradient from foreground to background and then what you can do with that gradient is you can use that to help create this nice kind of easing fog texture that goes from back to front of the image. So what we'll do now is now I've kind of happy and rendered that out, let's save out the Z depth channel and the RGB. Now to do this, we can either select each one and hit save in the current channel, or you can just hold down on save current channel, go to the save all image channels to separate files and this will save all of those image files in that li list we've got there so the alpha the rgb and the z depth all as separate images so we'll call this test and we'll save that out and now let's load this back into photoshop to apply that z depth on top 
So here you can see my three render elements we've rendered out. We've got the alpha channel, we've got the RGB, and then we've got the Z depth. So let's load these into our Photoshop file. Now to load these in simultaneously, we can use a script in Photoshop called load files into stack. This is found under files, scripts, and load files into stack. When this comes up, it will ask you to select where your files are. So we'll just copy the link from here and we'll just paste the link in our box uh, and load those in. And with those loaded in, if we hit OK, it will simultaneously load those images into one Photoshop file, all overlaid on top of one another. So now we have the alpha, the RGB and the Z depth all on top of one another. Now for this, I don't need the alpha and I can move the Z depth on top of my RGB there. And then as we went through before to overlay that, we just select the Z depth Go image adjustments invert or control I to invert the image put the image on a screen blending mode and there you've got that nice kind of fog fading from foreground to background in there and I can change the intensity of that by adjusting the fill here now one other thing we can do with this is we can also control the intensity and the closeness of the fog using a curves adjustment layer now if I go to my adjustments here add in curves and then holding down the alt key between the curves and the z depth we can clip the curves so they just affect that z depth and then what i can do if i pull up on the side of this curve and sort of bring it forward what this effect will have is it will essentially bring that fog forward in the scene and we can also ramp it back and the same can happen if we sort of darken the image up, you can pull the fog back in the scene, so it only affects the scene further back as well. So we can use the fog, the um, curve, sorry, to control that fog of the Z depth. The reason this works is if I put this back to a normal, we put it to 100%, you can see what's happening here, is the curves just darkens and lightens the image. And essentially what that's doing is it's just increasing or decreasing that fog effect so you can essentially use it to brighten up or darken up that fog in the image. So that was just a very quick tutorial on how to render out a Z depth render element and how to apply that to create fog in your renders. Thank you for watching.